Hi everyone, Jody with the Ring Lord here. Welcome to season two, episode five of our beginner weave series. This is European four in one. So on the work surface here, uh, you can see that I've got three different shapes of European four in one. Um, I'm going to show you how to make all three of them as well as a related shape to the triangle, which is this popular earring kind of a fan. Um, I will have a link to our website in the description where we have a chart of all of the ring sizes we have tested as well as ring counts. To make European 4-in-1, you need an aspect ratio of higher than 3, or the minimum is about 2.9. Uh, it's pretty tight and rigid at that AR. So for beginners, I suggest um, nothing larger than an aspect ratio of about four. So today we're going to be using a 16 gauge SWG 1.6 millimeter wire with one quarter inch um, ID rings, which is about an aspect ratio of 4.1. These two are made from 16 gauge SWG, um, seven thirty seconds of an inch rings. Uh, the reason I don't suggest going any larger than aspect ratio of about four <clears throat> is because the rings will flip and it makes it hard to make the weave until you've gotten good at making it and you can spot where it. Uh, where they flip. So the way I'm going to set this video up is each section will have a chapter so that you can click on the timestamp and be taken to that section. So let's get started. We're going to start with just your normal European 4-in-1 and I do want to note here that <clears throat> there are two ways to use European 4-in-1. This is closed orientation and most of the time you'll see this used for clothing. Um, you can use it for curtains, um, but for clothing the reason you want to orient it this way is because it has room to expand. So when you're moving it expands and contracts with the movement. Um, so that was closed. And then if you turn it this way, so imagine this is hanging. Um, you could use this for like a partition, a tablecloth, but basically what you're getting is this open weave where you can sort of see through the circles. So let's get started making <clears throat> the weave. I'm going to be using our matte royal blue rings for closed rings and I will be using our matte orange rings for open rings. I am using the same size that I use for the demonstration piece uh, so 16 gauge SWG one quarter inch um, rings. So the first thing you want to do to make European 4-in-1 is make a 5-let. So what that is, is it's one center ring. This is an open ring. And I'm going to pick up four closed rings. So I would suggest going ahead and opening some rings and closing a pile of rings. You don't have to do that. You can do um, what's called 1 plus 1, which is using a rings that are not open or closed so that they come in this raw format like this one. And as you go, you pick up a ring, open it, pick up four rings and then close them. I don't do it that way, but you can do it however is, you know, effective for you. So we've got one ring with four closed rings on it. And so when I split them, you can see you've got this one ring in the center and four rings around it. So European four in one literally means there are four rings 
connected by one ring. So one ring goes through four rings. So if you look at the sample piece here, one, this light purple ring goes through four violet rings. So we've made our fivelet, which again is one ring through the four closed rings. And now we're going to add on to this so that we can make one section, this section right here, of our piece. So this would be like if you were making a bracelet or a strap. Um, so you're going to pick this up. And again, you want to make sure that your rings are stacked properly. So the outside or end ring should always be above the rings before it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my closed, or I'm sorry, my open orange ring, and I'm going to go down through the closest ring, scoop around, and come up through the far ring, and close the ring. So what you should have is this. So I'm going to grab another orange ring, open it, and put two closed blue rings on it. I'm going to pick this up, make sure that my rings are stacked in the right direction. These rings are on top of the rings previous. I'm going to scoop down through the closest ring to me, around, and up through the far ring and close. So this should be growing now let's talk about what happens if your rings flip so I'm going to purposely flip this end ring and I did choose this aspect ratio because it can flip in this aspect ratio it's just you have to kind of balance the ring size with aspect ratio when you're just starting so if you notice, this ring that I just flipped is now on top of the center ring instead of being underneath it. This is actually another weave. It's called gridlock. Uh, it's a nice weave, and, but it's not what we're making. So if you were to add rings, you would have this wrong piece in your European foreign one. So what you want to do is simply flip the center ring back over, push the blue rings through, and then set it down and make sure that your rings are stacking again. And they are. So we're going to go ahead and add another section. So one open ring and two closed rings. Okay, we're going to add these at the end, down through the close ring, scoop around, up through the far ring, and close. So I'm just going to do a couple more of these. I am using our matte finish rings. These are saw cut anodized aluminum. Um, we do have a shiny finish and we have the matte finish. These are matte royal and matte orange. The pliers I'm using are my absolute favorite pliers. I've used them for as long as we've had them, which has been, I don't know, five, seven years. I'm not sure. Um, probably more like five. I don't think we had them when I started. Uh, but they're Tronex um, made for mailers pliers. And the reason I like them, uh, this is the long jaw version, by the way. Uh, the reason I like them is because uh, the way the jaw is shaped, 
it gets very thin toward the tips here. So I can get into lots of small places with these pliers because they have such um, thin jaws and it just makes it a lot easier. I probably use these pliers for 95% of my work. Okay, so we have made, I'm going to turn this so it's in the same orientation as the one above it. Okay, so we have made one section of the of European Form 1. So if you wanted to make a bracelet um, or a necklace or strap, you can certainly stop with this width um, to add a clasp to this. I would just take a center ring, open it, and it depends on what clasp you're using, but mine is a lobster clasp with the loop oriented so that I only need to add one ring. So I would simply do the same thing that we've been doing and add the clasp that way. And then at the other end, I would probably add a couple extender rings so that this has one ring to clasp onto. So I'm going to take this off. I just wanted you to see how to clasp this. And now I'm going to show you how to expand widthwise this European foreign one. So I'm going to use the method where I add closed rings. You can do this one ring at a time. You can do it one plus one, whatever works for you. If you were going to add, uh, just do it one ring at a time, you would add the center column, which would be orange, and you would add it to two rings, two rings, two rings, two rings, all the way down. And then you would add blue in the same manner. So I'm going to grab two rings. So at the top, you're going to put two rings in, two closed rings. So... You want to make sure your rings are in the proper stacking order. So I'm making sure that this ring is above that ring. And I'm just going to put the orange ring through two rings. So those top two rings. Because I'm always wanting to make sure that my orange rings are going through four blue rings. And you can see that because I added two blue rings, they're now going, or it is now going through four rings. The top is the only time that you add two rings. Now we're going to add one ring to an open ring. And the reason is because we already have three existing rings. We've got this ring, this ring, and that ring. So I'm going to come up through the ring that's kind of the third ring down, the empty one, up through the one above it and scoop around to the one on the edge and come up through it and close. So you can see that now this ring has four blue rings that it's going through. So we're going to grab another open orange ring. We're going to grab one closed blue ring. And now we're going through the one here that doesn't have, it has one orange ring going through it over here, but now it needs another one. So we can make four blue rings on this side. So I'm going through one, down through two, scooping around and coming up through that edge ring. And always check yourself. So one, two, three, four. And you can, you'll be able to tell if you've done something wrong because the weave won't lay flat or something will look odd. 
um, but it's best to just double check that you've got it through four rings. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this. So if I wanted to make this wider, I would simply repeat the steps I just did. So I would add two, um, one orange ring with two closed blue rings at the top and then subsequently add one orange ring with one closed blue ring. You can also extend it down here just by doing exactly what we did in the first steps uh, to make it as long as you want. When you get wide pieces of European Form 1 and you want to use them as like a bracelet or a cuff, um, clasping it can be a challenge. So you can taper the edge down to one ring like we like I showed you how to do um, with the just the smaller um, piece. We also have tube clasps. Uh, that can get pretty wide. I think we've got one with eight or nine loops. Um, so you just want to keep in mind, you know, how you want to clasp it. If it needs to be clasped, you can make what's called a permanent um, bracelet where you would make it long enough for a person and then there's no clasp. You just, cl you just um, attach it to itself. So that's also a possibility. So uh, that's it for this section. This is just your normal European Form 1. Section 2 is how to make European Form 1 in a triangle shape. And I'll also quickly show you how to uh, make this sort of fan shape earring. It's based on a triangle. So I'm going to move this out of the way. There are a couple ways that you can do the triangle or start the triangle. You could do a fivelet like I showed you at the beginning of the video, and it would make the middle part or not the edge part of the base of the triangle, the widest part here. Um, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to just use three rings. So I have an open ring and three closed rings. And I'm going to close the open ring. And I'm using the same rings I used in the first section of the video. These are slightly smaller, the ones that are made. These are 7 30 seconds and I'm weaving right now in quarter inch rings. So you just need to orient them like that and we'll be working with these two rings here. So I'm going to add a closed, um, one open ring with two closed rings. Now, I didn't show you this in the other section. My rings are not um, stacked properly. So I have them stacked down instead of up. So when I go to try to go down through the closest ring and up through the blue, the furthest ring, it just turns into a two and two piece. So you can do one of two things. Instead of going down through the close ring, you come up and go around the top and close it. that it ends up like that which I turned it around and flipped it so now it's oriented the correct way or you could just flip it over orient it 
the correct way and do it the way we've been doing it with coming up instead of, or I'm sorry, scooping down instead of scooping up. So I'm just going to make the rest of this base the same way we made the first part of our European foreign one. Now note that this is flipping on the edge. It's due to the aspect ratio being large enough that it allows it to flip. So I'm going to use an open ring, scoop up two closed rings, add them, close the ring. We'll do that again. So I'm going to grab an orange ring, add two blue rings that are closed, and add them to the piece. Now you can make your triangle as big as you want. So however big you want it to be, that's how wide you would make the bottom. I'm going to stop here. Um, I'm going to close one more blue ring because I don't need two because I want to make the corner here now. You still do the same thing though. So I've got one closed ring on an open ring and now I'm just going to go through these two end rings because I want that one ring to be at the bottom. So that's the bottom of our triangle. So if I turn this one, you can see this is the first three or well, two rows with the center rings. So this is where I start using one ring at a time. I just find it easier. Um, if you want to do, you know, have the one ring, open ring and the closed rings on it, you can certainly do that. Uh, I just find it a little bit easier because of the graduation down into the point to just do one ring at a time. So to do that, I'm going to turn this so I can access the rings. You we'll just go through two rings at a time. So that's the first two rings. Like so. Then I'm going to go through these next two blue rings. I'm sorry. I'm going to go through the next blue ring and the previous blue ring. And I'm going underneath the orange ring. Then I'm going to do the same thing. So you're just grabbing the next blue ring and the previous ring. And this row will be one ring, I'm sorry, two rings shorter than the previous one. So, I'm sorry, one ring. So this was five. The blue one was five rings, so this one is four rings. And then the next row will be three, two, one. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this real quick and then we'll be done with the triangle. If your rings flip, you just flip them back up. If 
the flipping gets too bad, I have seen people, if you're using a bead mat, this is vinyl, um, but if you're using like a squishy bead mat, you could actually pin these corners down. I've seen people do that. It can help. Uh, the other thing that helps really is practicing with smaller rings so that you get the hang of the weave. And so you know that when this ring flips, you know what to do or you recognize that it has flipped. So I'm just going to put this last ring in. So now we have the same ring, or I'm sorry, the same shape. So if you wanted to make this fan shape, you would just need to choose however many rings across you want. I think this one has nine, which is probably too many. Um, seven is, depending on how large your rings are and how large your large ring is up here. This is a 14 gauge SWG two millimeter, seven sixteenths of an inch uh, saw cut anodized aluminum ring. And these are the 16 gauge SWG seven thirty seconds rings. So this kind of works. Um, so you need to make sure you have a ring that's large enough to go through your other rings. Um, so I'm going to grab a ring and what I would do is just flip this around and all you do is you just go through all of the top row with your large ring and close it and there you go so I it is much easier to create your triangle and put it on the large ring than it is to weave a triangle hanging off of this ring. It can be done and that's how actually I usually do it. Um, but it twists and the rings get flipped around and it makes it really challenging. Um, so this is definitely the easier way to do it. So now we're going to go on to section three where I'm going to show you how to make European 4-in-1 on the bias. Now we're going to move on to European 4-in-1 on the bias. And all of that means is that it's done at a diagonal. This sample, I did a downward diagonal as well as upward just to show you that it can be done that way. You can certainly do it only with a down angle or the up angle, however you want to do it. These are 16 gauge 730 seconds rings and I am going to use that size because it doesn't flip around as much. So I'm going to make a fivelet. So I am using a matte red ring at the center and four of the matte royal rings for the closed rings. And I will, after I make this one section of, of European form one, I will make this one ring at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more sections to this. Actually, I'm just going to add this one and then I'm going to add the singles. So double check to make sure you've got it right. So there's my first three sections of European Form 1. Now I'm going to make this and that. So I'm going to take an open ring with one closed ring. And I'm going to add it to the bottom rings. Same as if you had two closed rings on it. This is sort of like making a triangle where, where I just use three rings at the corner. Okay, so this one's going to flip over here. And now I'm going to make the top corner. 
What I'm going to do is flip this over so that my rings stack properly, like so. And I'm going to add the one ring. Like so, if I flip it back over. And get my rings straight. There we go. That's what it should look like. You should have an asymmetrical piece with one higher end and one lower end. So we've got blue, red, blue. So now we need to add red rings. So I'm going to show you how to add these one at a time. So you want to, same thing as I showed you previously. I'm just going to grab one red ring and add it to two rings that are already here. So these are the top two rings. I'm going to go down a ring and through that ring previous. Close the ring. Do it again. And then we're going to do it one more time. Because if you look at the sample here, there's always four rings in every column. So there's that. Now we're going to start adding blue rings. Same idea. So it's going to be easier for me to pick it up. So I'm going to add a blue ring to these two top red rings and close. And whenever you add a ring, the way you can make sure that you're adding it in the right place is to make sure that it's always at a downward slope. Or if you're doing upward, make sure it's at an upward slope. So I'm going to add another blue ring underneath the one I just added. Make sure you grab both of the red rings. Close. Okay, and I can tell that it's correct because it's sloping down. It's in this same, so we've got one and we've got the second row. Now we're going to add the third. And now I know we need another one because there's always four rings in every column. So I'm just going to add this one ring to this red ring at the bottom. Close. If you wanted to continue going on a downward angle, you would just continue doing what I just showed you. If you would like to make it go back up, I will show you how to do that. So it's instead of placing your red ring down here we're going to place it so that it's in the same position as the previous red column so to here you could start at the top too it really doesn't matter two there i'm sorry one through those two rings we will go one through these two rings. And now, because we always have four rings, okay, this ring has flipped. There we go. Because we always have four rings, we're going to add one at the top. Like so. Okay. So we are going to 
going in the same direction now as here. Now we're adding going back up. So I went through the two bottom red rings. Now I'm going to go through the next two up. Now I'll go through the next two up and then add one up at the top. And that is how you make European foreign one on the bias. If you have any questions about an order or a product, please contact customer service at orders at the ringlord.com. If you need help with a project or a weave or have a question about a tutorial, please email us at project help at the ringlord.com. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you hit the notification bell, you will be notified when we upload new content. I hope this video has been useful and I hope you have a great day.